This is Hatchet Pond, the new forest's largest area of fresh water. Unlike many lakes across the country, Hatchet Pond is the perfect habitat for a large variety of wildlife, as they have an array of freshwater plants and animals. The large variety of species is mainly due to its unpolluted water, the history of low intensity land management and the many habitat types within the pond. Places like this are becoming scarce within this country as litter, pollution and urbanisation are destroying our environment. This location offers a safe environment for wildlife as it's rural, has open space and has a variety of habitats for many different animals. It's clear we need more areas like this. The environment in our country is under threat and it's up to us to do what we can to reduce our impact and create a healthier environment for ourselves and the wildlife we live with. So during today's show we're going to show you the importance of the environment as well as what we can do to look after the animals that live in it. Roll the titles. Ugh, this is the worst day of my life. Rubbish, it was soaking wet, it was freezing cold. And I'm never going outside again, and deck the cameraman was in the worst mood I've ever seen anyone in my life. The whole crew was, it was a pretty late thing. And my hair's ruined, but anyway, let's get on with the show. Hello, and welcome to CCI TV. My name is Sam Freebody. And I'm Ethan Williams, and today's programme is going to be discussing the environment and its potential effect on the many different types of wildlife. Whether it is in open grassland, on the beach, or in the middle of the city, today's show is going to give you an insight into how our environment is changing and what we can do to save it. So, coming up. Many would argue that climate change is having an impact everywhere. We head to South Sea Beach to see what the local people are doing to stop the massive tide of litter. We'll be interviewing Professor John McGeehan, who engineers an enzyme capable of degrading plastic faster than any other enzyme. Also, in the CCI studio, we're going to be telling you how animals have been affected by climate change over the years all across the globe. And lastly, we head down to Brent Lodge Wildlife Hospital to meet the animals already battling the full effects of climate change. Before all of that, let's turn our focus onto the wildlife in the city. Now, when most people think of wild animals, they think of ones that live in the woods, like a squirrel, mm. the sea, like a fish or a shark or whatever, um, or in fairly rural areas, like we saw in that VT, like a yep. horse or a donkey or whatever. However, UK cities are home to many different species of wildlife. A small fact for you guys, London alone has over 13,000 species of wildlife. I don't know about you, Ethan, but I never would have guessed that there was that many. No, nor me. I guess it's really easy to forget about all these types of animals. They live in the city where most of us consider animals live in, in the in grass animals, or yeah. whatever animals live, I don't know. Uh, but uh, city animals are really important to city life as they help consume organic waste, pest control and process air and water pollution. However, as we know, the world is changing. Cities are getting more and more populated, meaning more and more buildings are being built which ultimately will destroy the habitat of many animals. Urbanisation has been happening for years and will continue to do so. However, there are many things uh, that us humans can do to help to try and reduce the damage being caused to animals in populated areas. The main issue that affects animals and the environment is litter. I have some interesting facts here that you wouldn't have necessarily known. One of which being that the amount of litter dropped in the UK has increased by 500% since the 1960s. Terrifying, it does show just how much urbanisation and the global population um, has affected the environment. Another quick stat for you, did you know that approximately 8 million pieces of plastic pollution find their way into our oceans that is a lot. every year, that's nuts. It is so easy for litter to be found on beaches and in the sea as they can be blown from landfill sites or washed down into the sea by rivers and drainage networks. And I'm afraid the statistics just get worse, as it is now predicted that over 100,000 marine mammals and turtles, as well as 1 million seabirds, are killed by marine plastic annually. So Sam, what can we actually do about it? Well, luckily here in Portsmouth, there are many cleaning schemes that help reduce the litter around the city. It's important to keep the natural environment as clean as possible, as it enables the wildlife and marine life to live in a clean and clear environment. So we went over to the South Sea Beach Cleanup to see some of the volunteers help clean up the washed up litter, as well as speak to the organiser of the society. Society.
we need to keep our environment clean for two reasons. First of all, long term for, the, for our own health, as more and more plastic drifts into the sea and breaks down, it gets in, absorbed into the, uh, the smaller part of the ecosystem, i.e. through phytoplankton and zooplankton, and then gets, uh, goes up the, the food chain. So Sarsi Beach Watch uh, originated in 1998 and we've been uh, basically keeping the beach clean for about 20 years now. We started seeing uh, in Ecrevis loads of plastic uh, and in pretty much every single, uh, every, every single mammal and uh, fish in the sea now. From the seagull on our shores to, uh, to the seals, we also have uh, deers. Uh, about three months ago, we had a deer that got trapped on the pier just alongside uh, Henry VIII Castle and he died trapped in, the, in plastic and in wires that were uh, drifting at sea. Volunteers on a monthly basis here at uh, Sassy Beach Watch is about 130, 160, yeah, give or take. As we do this uh, on the first Saturday of every month, uh, normally we, we get about 60, 70 kilograms of litter of the beach. And this involves plastic, uh, wrappers, um, coffee cups, um, spoon, a lot basically players, and obviously the dreaded straw. Long term, we are, we're going to have a problem because as more and more fish eat plastic, they don't feel satisfied, if you want, from the food, and therefore they will starve. And we see that with birds, we see that across the world. And uh, the issue really is that if we don't do something, and if we don't do something quite quickly, we're going to end up with no, no, no fish in the sea because they will have starved to death, basically. Yeah, it's great to see that people do actually still care about the environment and are willing to help to try and save it. Remember, the cleaner the environment, the more safer place is for animals. As you saw, there are bags and bags of litter, most of which is plastic. Plastic has been the highest form of litter for years now as it's used so much worldwide. It's cheap, capable of being made into any conceivable shape and strong and durable. It has proved so useful uh, to humans that since the 1950s we've produced an estimated 8.3 billion metric tons of it. Billion. 12.7 million tons of plastic waste are washed into the ocean every year, which really affects the marine life. People have been trying to solve this problem for years. Well, here in Portsmouth, a solution might just have been found as a very special type of enzyme has been developed. Enzymes are proteins that act as biological catalysts which can speed up reaction times and break things down. The enzyme created here at Portsmouth Uni is capable of breaking down something called PET, which is the strongest plastic used in bottles. Now, normally PET would take hundreds of years to break down, but this enzyme means it can be broken down in just a few days. Luckily for us, the man who made this astonishing scientific breakthrough, Professor of Structural Biology John McGeehan, is here while this is in the studio. Hi. Hi John, could you talk us through the enzyme and what it can do? Yeah, so the enzyme is actually something that uh, appeared in nature, which is kind of amazing. We've inadvertently done this huge experiment, like uh, you just mentioned, that we put all this plastic into the environment. And what we're seeing is nature, although it has a, a capacity to heal itself, what we're, when we actually look in detail, we can find it's actually producing these enzymes that digest plastic waste. So there was a Japanese group back in 2016 that were digging at the bottom of one of these giant plastic recycling facilities and amazingly they found a bacteria that was living off the plastic. It was actually breaking it down and using it as food, yeah. which is kind of amazing because mm. plastic's only been around in large amounts for the past 50 years. Mm. So what we did at Portsmouth is pull out that gene and started making the enzyme in the lab and tried to characterize it and make it better. Now, it breaks down something called PET. I've got it written down here, polyethylene terephthalate? Terephthalate, very oh, good. Not yes, too bad. Yes, excellent. Yes. I think it's the Welsh town names that help yeah, me out with that. It must have been. Um, so what is it about this enzyme that allows PET to be broken down so fast? So PET is an incredible material. You know, when chemists were asked to design something that was lighter than glass and stronger, and as you mentioned, can be molded into any shape, they came across this uh, PET chemical. 
Uh, what it is, it's two molecules, terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol, the stuff that you put in your car radiator. You link it together with an ester bond and you create these long chains called polyesters. If you look at your clothes, you'll see polyesters, that's all they are, these building blocks linked together. What the enzyme does is it comes along and snips those bonds and releases the monomers. Um, which, if we can do that on a large scale, means we can turn this really strong plastic back into the building yeah. blocks and then reuse it again. That's a nice way to think of it, actually. Mm. Nice way to kind of, I said before the show I failed biology A-level, <laughs> so it's a nice way to kind of break it down. Neither of us did very well. <laughs> so can you tell us why has plastic become such a problem for our marine life? Well, the major problem, um, is, particularly with things like PET, is that because there's, there's very little natural breakdown, uh, the plastic bottle that ends up in the sea today can be there for 500 years, so your children's 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 children will be able to pick it up off a beach, which is a really scary thought. So what we need to do is develop solutions, first of all, to stop the plastic getting in there um, and, and affecting the wildlife and the marine infrastructure. So we need to use less plastic, that's the first thing. But the second thing is, can we use those natural enzymes to help solve the, the problem? And that's what we're trying to do. If we can make enough of this enzyme at scale, you could imagine we collect the plastic, so we still need to collect the plastic, and you know, congratulations to all the people who are helping doing that. We need to get that into a recycling facility, but then if we can use the enzymes, we can break it down into those building yeah. blocks, then we don't need to dig up any more oil. We can use the plastic as a resource, actually a valuable material. Waste becomes valuable material then the economics will take care of itself and, and hopefully then we can get round to the circular economy. That's, yeah. that's our plan. Um, you had a great team working on you with this. I know you wanted to talk a little bit about them. So how many people did it take to come together and kind of develop so the, the story that was released in April, um, the, the paper that we published had 21 authors from five different groups from uh, Brazil to Portsmouth to the USA. Um, it was led, uh, it's great actually, it was led by one of our own Portsmouth University PhD That's students, <laughs> Harry Austin, uh, who's, who's now famous in his hometown of Ireland and across the world. The story went out to 200 million people and it's, that's, that's a real, um, you know, Portsmouth should be proud for leading this type of research because yeah. it's really reached a, a global community. But it's a team effort, so I'm here speaking on behalf of all the people yeah. that were involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 200 million people, that's insane that's that is. How does that feel though to know that so many people have actually seen this work? Frightening actually, <laughs> <laughs> but in a very positive way because a lot of the companies that we were trying to work with, uh, they were very difficult to get in touch with. But after the story, the companies came to us and yeah. said, can we work with you? Can we use this enzyme? So I'm really pleased to say that we're working with some of those big national, international companies yeah. now, and they're helping us to make the enzyme. So where I might have said where we'd been one to five years, it's now really um, accelerated the process. And now we're doing that stuff now. It's yeah. really exciting. See, if it weren't for you discovering this fantastic new way to de decompose plastics, how do you believe the future would look for us and for sea life? Obviously, it's a much darker picture. I think, yeah, there is, that is a doom and gloom picture, and it's, but it's very realistic. As you mentioned, there's 8 million tonnes of plastic going into the ocean every year, and that's not you know, a level number, that's actually going up. Mm. We're using more of it. So I think if we don't get a grip on this urgently, um, we're really going to see some, some major cat catastrophic effects. We're only just beginning to find out, for example, uh, the, the problems of microplastics making their way into food and human health. I think in the next few years we'll find out a lot more about that, but I can guarantee that it's not going to be good. So yeah, we really need to think quite hard about we use plastics, yeah. try and use less and yeah. try and recycle more. Do you think it's a realistic prospect? I mean, there's so much, you look in the mainstream media, there's so much talk about plastic mm. that we use so much, it ends up everywhere, we don't need it. Is it a realistic prospect? Now that we've got this kind of technology and this kind of biology, is it a realistic prospect that we can achieve? There's two things that will make it realistic. One is people power, you know, and it's people like David Attenborough who showed yeah, Blue yeah. Planet to change people's perception. That changes government, government will legislate and things will happen, they'll make those producers change their ways and recycle more. Um, the other one is economics. Uh, so as scientists, we need to develop a solution that can make money. So if we can turn waste plastic into monomers that we can sell and they're actually even make materials that are even better than the original plastic, then the economics will go forward. So this is what we're hoping. So if we get those two things, we, yeah. yes is yeah, the answer. We're gonna have to leave it there for time, John. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. Now, we've seen the destruction that litter and plastic can cause animals, but it's not just rubbish waste that is doing damage. Thankfully, Jebba will be taking a closer look in our CCI weather report.
Hello, I'm Jebba Ali and today's weather report will give you guys an idea on how climate change has damaged the environment and the wildlife's habitats around the world. Firstly, we're going to be talking about Australia. Australia has been home to some of the worst bushfires known to man, with days such as Black Saturday burning its way through more than one million acres of Australian landscape in the state of Victoria. It killed over 170 people and had an overwhelming impact on the wildlife. Australia's high temperatures make it exceptionally defensive to events such as Black Saturday, with temperatures set to arise by a shocking 5 degrees Celsius by the year 2090, which will only mean Australia will become more vulnerable to wildfires. These intense bushfires cause death of a large number of native animals and insects, who are unable to avoid the flames by incineration or smoke suffocation. This results in a significant decrease on the numbers of these animals in the local environment, which can have a drastic impact on the ecosystem. Now let's head over to Brazil. Higher temperatures and drastic changes in rainfall are just some of the expected consequences of climate change here in Brazil. A study conducted by 300 scientists have recently spoken about the subject. They predict that if the present trend in greenhouse gas emissions continue, the average temperature in Brazil will be 3 to 6 degrees Celsius higher in 80 years time. This is having a fatal impact on their crop produce, which could impact heavily on the local community food sources. With the heat rising, this means that there is an increase on deforestation within the Amazon rainforest. This therefore means animals will die as their home is becoming increasingly smaller. Now let's get back home to England. The summer of 2003 saw England's hottest summer on record for 500 years. During the heat wave, around 2,000 people died from heat exhaustion and dehydration, with places such as Kent reaching an extremely high temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. It's predicted that in the summer of 2040, it will be normal for England to reach temperatures this high. With the temperatures rapidly climbing, this also means England's rainfall is decreasing in some places, however, it's increased in, in other locations. This brings flooding and droughts to England. This has a huge impact on the farming community. Crops will die with no water, and this means a shortage of food in supermarkets and shortage of animal feed, which will affect food supplies. Now let's head north to Greenland in the Arctic. Scientists worry about the ice melting due to environmental issues such as climate change. As Arctic summer sea ice diminishes, some polar bear populations such as Alaska's find themselves stuck hunting scarce prey on the land for more weeks of the year. As well as this, they now have to swim farther into the Arctic Ocean to find ice and prey, using up stores of energy they need for survival and reproduction. Sea ice loss also poses a threat to seals, fish, wolves and foxes. The Arctic food chain relies on a stable sea ice platform that is now disappearing, putting the region's wildlife at risk. Satellite measurements since the early 1990s indicate that sea level is rising at a rate of 3 mm per year. Lastly, we're heading over to Venice. While Venice is such a beautiful city, it could soon be underwater. It's predicted that by 2090, the Mediterranean Sea will rise up by 140 centimetres. The rest of the coastline will also eventually be underwater, due to greenhouse gases. The sea levels have already risen by 33 centimetres, which means that Venice floods annually. Many Italy's artists have taken a stand against global warming and the flooding. One artist, Lorenzo Quinn, built a statue of hands reaching out to the coastline to draw attention to the sinking city. The floods have a huge impact on life here for the residents and they will soon have to leave their beautiful city move and to move elsewhere. With the rise in water levels, it's not only humans who will have to leave. The animals in Venice will also lose their homes. Humans will be able to leave before the flooding as they know when it will get too dangerous to stay there. The wildlife, however, can't. They aren't aware of the flooding, meaning that once the flooding becomes devastating, it will potentially wash out all wildlife. As you can see, the whole world faces this problem and it's having a disastrous impact on our climate and wildlife. If we all do our bit to try and save our planet, it will be a much better place and there wouldn't be so many endangered animals. Hopefully you guys have got more of an insight into how climate change is affecting the environment globally. Thank you for listening to this weather report. Back to Sam and Ethan in the Hub. Thank you very much Gemma and CCI Weather for that crucial weather report which clearly shows the damage climate change is doing to our environment. Now as Gemma said Australia has been home to some horrendous wildfires. This will become an ongoing problem as the earth gets warmer. You may have heard about the recent fires in California. Historically California's wildfire season started in summer and ran into early autumn but experts have warned that the risk is now all year round. 
The recent wildfires have been one of the worst California has ever faced, as over 150,000 people have been displaced from their homes, and over 8,000 firefighters were needed to try and tackle the blaze. With the world getting warmer and warmer, it's important to do everything we can to ensure the planet doesn't heat up as quickly as it could. We don't want to see such devastating wildfires destroying homes and habitats, much like what's been happening. Now, we've seen what climate change uh, can cause all around the world, but what can we actually do to prevent it? Using energy wisely is something all of us can do. This includes small things, such as unplugging your computers, televisions, or any electronics you might have. As well as this, if you switch to energy-efficient light bulbs, not only will you pollute less, you'll also save money. Greening your commute can also make a huge difference. Decide you really need to drive or take that taxi when you could walk, or even ride a bike. Not only would it be the best solution uh, in terms of limiting transportation emissions, but it will be healthier and a lot cheaper as well. And lastly, saving water can also help the fight against climate change. You may not think that water would take up much, make much of a difference, but it actually takes up a lot of energy to pump, heat, and treat it. Therefore, it's important to take into account just how much water you are using. Now, as we know, animals can easily be affected and harmed by the environment, mainly because of litter, their habitats being destroyed by building work, and lack of food due to the decline of other species. So, Sam, is there anything we can actually do? Well, Brent Lodge Wildlife Hospital in Chichester is a voluntary organisation that has been treating and rehabilitating injured, sick and orphaned wildlife for over 40 years. As well as this, they are also actively involved in a recycling scheme, as they have a passion for keeping the environment as clean as possible. We wanted to get a closer look into what they do, so head it over to chat to some of the employees who work there. Okay, so we have to clean out and feed all of the hedgehogs every single day. Um, so uh, there's in excess of 150 cages in the hospital. Um, they all get cleaned and fed every single morning. And then in the afternoon, we go around and check that they're still okay, they're, they're not left in their faeces overnight, that they've got enough food overnight. Um, so yeah, it's busy, busy at this time of year. So uh, we are a working wildlife hospital. Uh, we treat between three and 3,500 patients every year. Um, everything from your tiny little mice all the way up to deers, badgers and foxes. And again, from your tiny wrens all the way up to swan. So the process of cleaning the cage is first and foremost, you've got to find your patient um, to make sure they're in there. Um, we do get the odd escapee, so hedgehogs are really good. They can fit in the smallest of gaps um, and they like to scarper. Um, if that happens, we do have plastic on the front of the, sh of the cages to try and prevent it. Um, but we do have a lot of little hedgehogs at the minute. So you have to kind of find them first. So these two are right at the back. So they're just pick, like picking up really spiky rugby balls, basically. There you go, it's one. One little man. Go in there. Um, so we have to take their food and water bowls out and we have to record how much individual patient, each individual patient has eaten um, just to ensure that they're eating um, well and that they're gaining weight. So you get some that are really long stats and some that are really short and stubby, so they do vary. There you go, darling. Bedtime. You go to bed. Humans are definitely affecting the animals and the environment. Definitely, definitely. Um, summer this year has been... Un we've never had a summer like this one this year. And that, that's got to be down to global warming. It's not from nowhere. Um, and that has affected every animal that's come through the doors. So we had huge amounts of dehydrated animals this summer. Um, I've never seen anything like it, in fact. And I've been here a very long time. Uh, the, he the hedgehogs have bred longer into the year, which is fantastic for hedgehog numbers. Only we get go from one extreme to the other. So now it's gone from hot to cold and all those little babies are left. Um, mum, mum goes, right, I'm off to hibernate and these babies are left. So that's kind of where we're picking up the pieces at the minute and taking all the little young ones in. Um, but yeah, rubbish is a massive thing. Pollution's huge. Um, we're getting hedgehogs caught up in things. We get fishermen discarding hooks and, and a huge number of animals coming with hooks down their, their throats and, and things. And I think that's the saddest thing we do here. Like you, you can understand, you know, natural predation and natural disease, but when you can see a human has definitely caused that, it's, it's really hard.
thank you so much to Brent Lodge for allowing us to get a closer look into the work they do and to how they save animals. I couldn't believe that there was that many animals that had to be treated and they were so cute. No, I know, fortunately it is a lot, but Brent Lodge is also involved in a recycling scheme where they recycle cars, textiles, batteries. I don't know why they picked that combination all sorts, of three, all sorts. Uh, and many more. But whilst on the topic of the recycling, as you can see here, we have some standard plastic tats from the house. All sorts. Um, we found the worst stuff we could find. Mm. Um, so I bet the viewers at home and you wouldn't have a clue what was recyclable and what wasn't. So we're going to give you a quick test. Okay. So we're going to start off plastic toy, another household children's favourite. Mm -hmm. What do we reckon, recyclable or not? Um, see, I, plastic cups are recyclable yeah. and that's made of plastic. So I'm going to take a logical leap here and say that you can recycle I think that, that is a logical, logical leap. However, you're wrong. Plastic oh. toys can't be recycled. Um, and your recycling centre won't accept them. And wooden toys are the same because most people, they paint or they varnish wooden toys, oh, yeah, so don't yeah. bother trying to recycle them. The best thing to do with your wooden toys is to sell them on or give them to a charity shop. Yeah. But we're going to make this a little bit interesting. Okay. Because we know how this game works. If everyone you get wrong, you have to push your teeth, your tooth down. Okay. And we'll see if you can get busted live on television. So here's the first one. Oh, oh I, was, I was convinced luckily, I was going to go first time. Right, what's next? Shampoo bottle. Oh, that's still full, that is. Right. Shampoo, what do we reckon? Recyclable? Again, I'm going to say it must be. You're right this time, oh. shampoo can be recycled, however it's best to check the label to see if there is a recyclable symbol on there. The main issue with shampoo bottles is people don't rinse them out, so obviously people recycle them and they've yeah. still got shampoo in them, so that's the big one. Do I still have to press the tooth? Uh, yeah, let's make it interesting. Just, just for television. Ooh, I'm safe, we're I'm gonna safe. Get you there. What about this one? Envelope but with the little windows, what do we think? I'm going to say recycle and I'll tell you why. Cheating a little bit, it says recycle on the back of the envelope. <laughs> oh, it does. Sorry, sorry, I've ruined it's the magic of television. Ruined. Television's completely Tell me about it anyway. I know. Well, uh, it's better to use plain white envelopes without the windows. Um, however, they can, they can now be recycled fairly recently. They've changed that. The plastic material isn't recyclable. However, they can be filtered out by the reci recycling system. And I'm right, guessing on, I've still got to do a tooth. Oh, I'm safe. To get you there. OK, what about kitchen roll? Kitchen roll. Yeah. Yes, got to be, surely. Final answer? Yes. You're wrong again. Kitchen really? roll can't be recycled. It's often not known, evidently. Uh, you can't recycle tissue paper either uh, because they're, made, they're already made from recycled paper, which means the fibres are too short and will result in a poor pulp in the recycling process. I don't know what it means by poor pulp. If the kitchen roll is too dirty, it can be composited as well as the cardboard tube in the middle. Right, last right. chance. See One last tooth. tooth. Oh. Are we not going to get it? Oh, oh, there we go. oh we there go. you got me. If you pick that one instead. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Not too bad, thing, but so I think people are surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised by how much they know. Uh, so hopefully you guys have got more of an idea on what you can and can't recycle. But unfortunately, we are now coming to the end of the show. Oh. Well, hopefully you guys have got more of an idea on how important the environment is and how we can help to try and save it. Get yourselves over to our Facebook and Instagram pages and give us a big thumbs up. And remember, if each of us do our bit to help save the environment, it really can make a difference to our lifestyle and the wildlife. Thank you so much for watching. Have a really good afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye.